Hey, question for you through the My His Radio app this morning. What are those simple things that make you happy as an adult? I'll tell you. I love fabric softener. I love to smell it when I pour it into the washer, when I take the clothes out of the dryer, and as I'm wearing clothes, if it doesn't have fabric softener where I can smell it, really, I am, I'm like not happy. But when I smell it, I don't know what it is. It's just comfort. I get that. I mean, I like a morning cup of coffee before everybody else wakes up. Oh, yeah. And it's just you, especially when it's cooler outside. You can sit outside and enjoy it and hear the birds chirp and all that stuff. I, I've, I have a feeling it has something to do when it comes to Scott, who does our news, something to do with the lawn. Even if I'm sweating profusely, <laughs> mowing my lawn, and it's something that as a kid, a teenager, you could not get me to do for anything. You can pry me out of the house to do it. But now I love mowing the lawn. Is it the act of mowing the lawn or is it like the smell of freshly cut grass? All of it. And then seeing the progress, you know, as you're going, the lines in the lawn and how nice and crisp and sharp it looks. Oh, I, I, can, I can see him standing there with this look of victory on his face after he mows yes. the lawn, just sit, standing in the front lawn. I Fist can... raised. Yes. <laughs> I love the smell of a bookstore, the smell of a library, and the smell of a lumber yard. I guess I like the smell of wood. I guess, yeah. You know what? I do like freshly cut wood, too. I do, too. Just smells really nice. Those accomplishments that just make you feel really good. For Jake, what's the accomplishments that just make you feel good when you're done? I love the uh, feeling that I have accomplished everything that I was supposed to do for the day, whether that means getting all my work stuff done or getting my chores done or, you know, like not necessarily house chores, but do this at the house, go to the bank, adulting, basically. Like, I've accomplished everything, and I don't got to do anything tomorrow. Yeah, nothing that would have made you super excited as a kid, but now as an adult, just makes your heart smile a little bit. Right. Checking off the to-do list. I do like and that. accomplishing it when it's done. 100%. Yeah. So, something that I like, this is kind of weird as an adult, but it carries over from something my mom used to do. She used to make us pudding. And when you make pudding like on the stove, it gets the skin on the top of it to peel it off and I get to eat it myself because <laughs> I'm oh, the only adult that likes it. That's all just for Liz. It is just mine now, but yeah. got that. This is going to sound mama. weird, but I like the feeling after a, a good workout. Yeah, and you wouldn't have necessarily liked that as a kid. You didn't think about it. I didn't it. care as a kid. Yeah, it was just playing at that point. <laughs> yeah. That was your workout. I, I wish I could play all the time, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> Rob and Liz, his morning crew. It is Rob and Liz in the morning. It's his radio. It's my favorite meteor shower of the entire year. How do you pronounce it? Persidian? Perseids. Uh, Perseids? I think. <laughs> Those Perseids there. But I love You got to like that Perseid <laughs> thing because it's got all them meteors. Yes. Yeah, it's coming up like really soon. Yeah, it always happens in August. And how do you know that? Because I got engaged during this meteor shower. <laughs> she did. <laughs> Her husband, when she when he proposed to her, it was during this media sh media meteor shower, and it was like, "Will you marry me?" And the meteors that just like kind of just sparkled all over the sky. Yeah, they were everywhere. I, we must have seen a hundred different like shooting stars. We could see the Milky Way during this thing. Uh, we got engaged on August thirteenth, so this one is. About that same time. It is. Actually, it's already started. It goes on until about August 24th, but there is like a prime time to see it, and it's between August 11th and 12th. Yes. And so those two days will be the prime that you should see the most out of this meteor shower. Yeah, find a place that is absolutely like pitch black. Um, I think it was last year, two years ago maybe, we were at the ocean. We had gone on vacation during this time, and we got out on the beach and watched. And we saw one or two. Yeah, I never really captured this meteor shower at its best. Well, it's 2 o'clock in the morning, typically, is when you'll see most of the meteors. That's the, the prime time. And I think the moon might be in the way. Yeah. Because of the moonlight, not because yeah. it's like blocking the meteor shower. Yeah, you you want like a crescent moon, just a sliver of a moon. If you have a full moon, it's really difficult to see it. 
Yeah, because it's true. so bright. It's true, but yeah, to see something like that, I still want to see it at least once. If yeah. I had a bucket list, this be on the bucket list. Yeah, you know, like take your family out somewhere and try to get to the darkest place in your area to be able to, to see it. Get away from all the city lights. <laughs> wow. Rob and Liz, his morning crew. Rob and Liz in the morning, his radio. Yeah, a spray-on shoe. And when I first heard about this, I'm thinking, okay, the runners show up on the track. And a spray can comes out, and they spray your foot? That's exactly what I thought. I'm thinking, spray on shoe? That's weird. No, it literally, it's spray on material that they make the shoe out of. And it's almost like a slip-on because there's no laces. And they say the material is so light. It's lighter than your phone. Mm-hmm. A whole lot lighter than your phone. And it's uh, the, the Kenyan runner who won the Boston Marathon won it with these shoes. It's incredible to think about this technology. Like, my brain doesn't work that way, but all I can think of is, like, silly string. You know, when you spray silly string, you have a material that actually comes out, not necessarily a liquid, but this is like, I just don't see the support. I don't. I don't feel like it's going to have much. Well, hey, it worked for her. As a matter of fact, she's going to wear them or these type of shoes in the uh, Summer Olympics coming up at the end of the week. So when she's on the track and field and she's doing the, I think she's doing the half or the full marathon, she's going to be wearing these shoes. I'm going to be paying attention to, and I don't typically watch track and field, but I might want to tune in just to see how the shoes work, or at least watch the highlights back. Right, and and particularly the marathon that this young Kenyan runner in is going to be in, because I, I, I feel she's going to win again. Well, I hope so. I hope so, because um, she has shown such incredible uh, ability, athletic ability. And oh, I, yeah. you know, I, I don't want to say the shoes may stand in her way. She's obviously had success with them before. So let's hope she does again. Yeah. And the shoe doesn't make somebody win. No, but it certainly could keep you from winning. Rob and Liz, his morning crew. Isabella Strahan. You might know the name because her dad is Michael Strahan. It's Robin Liz in the morning, his radio. You may have even heard the journey that she has been battling cancer. Well, she was just released from Duke University or Duke Hospital because she just had the port removed and she's cancer free. Yeah, she got to ring the bell and, uh, you know, she has had uh, basically a brain tumor is the uh, form of cancer that she had. It all started she had thought she had vertigo so she was just really dizzy and really weak of course they went in went to the doctor and uh, found that she had a brain tumor but she's been on this journey but now she went on her youtube channel and announced she is cancer free she said her side hurts a little bit right now but sure, she's, from where the port was exactly but she's she just she's just a bundle of joy yeah and to watch her just walk through this journey and how god has just been with her every step of the way You can see it. It's so apparent. Yeah, and she said um, she shouldn't say it, but she's going to miss all the doctors and all the staff and the other uh, kids, I guess, at the hospital because she got to know them. They took such good care of her, Um, but she is happy to have been able to How do you not get close? Rob and Liz, his morning crew. It's Rob and Liz in the morning, his radio. I've been stuck in an elevator a couple of times. I don't know about Liz. I have never been stuck in an elevator, but every time I, you know, think I might, I start calling for Keanu Reeves to come rescue me. <laughs> Keanu Reeves. Was that in Speed? In Speed. I remember that. Wow, that was a throwback movie. 90s, I think. Yeah, I hope they don't try to remake that one. They remake everything else like Twisters. So good. Over the weekend. <laughs> oh, she did go to it. I did. It was good. Yeah. Yeah. It was um, different than the first. A lot of action. Um, some of the same things. But it was still really good. I was reading about this guy in India that was visiting the hospital in India. And when he got into the the elevator, it went up almost a floor and then stopped. Hmm. He didn't come out for 48 hours. So he dropped his phone because he was so frustrated. When he dropped his phone, it broke. So he couldn't call anybody. Couldn't call anybody. No, but the the phone inside, because there's always a phone for emergencies inside the elevator. Nobody answered. Nobody answered. (laughs) At and all. The, I want to know, like, if, if you're in a hospital, where'd everybody go? Because right. he said nobody saved him until the doctors and nurses showed up to work on Monday. Yeah, and they're like, the, the, the elevator's not opening up, so an elevator operator had to be called to open up 
the elevator, and there's the guy. So he winds up staying in the hospital a little bit because well, there was a l- dehydration. Yeah. There was no food, and the air was really thin. But he was banging on this thing. He was yelling. Nobody heard him. I'm thinking this is a hospital. How did nobody hear hear this guy? And why did they wait till Monday to get an elevator working? I know they had no. They're like, oh, this thing gets stuck all the time. All right, take the other one. No worries. <laughs> he was panicked. He literally thought the end of his life was going to be inside this elevator. Well, of course, because maybe after an hour, you're like, okay, eventually somebody's going to come. But after a day, and then almost two days, yeah, you've pretty much, you know, made made some. Uh, Hard choices in your life of yeah. people I need to call or, you know, if I ever <laughs> get out of here. Yeah. It was like he was in the belly of a well. It just turned out to be a belly of an elevator. But he's doing fine now. Rob and Liz. His morning crew. I don't know if you remember this one lady in Hawaii that took a wrong turn because she was following her GPS and wound up in the harbor in Hawaii. It just happened again, only this time without the GPS intervention. <laughs> She just took a wrong turn. She did. And she told, I guess, the police, she said her car wasn't working. But I guess, you know, they have surveillance video where she stops on the boat ramp. And then she puts her car in drive and it just goes down into the water. Whoops. Yeah. And uh, the first ladies that did it, they were laughing about it. Like they were, you know, because they were like, oh, my goodness, I can't believe that I did that. This lady not laughing. So much at all. She wasn't really injured, but she did request to go to the hospital. I'm sure she did. I probably would, too. But (laughs) I think two different things here. One was a tourist, probably in a rental car. You can laugh. Yeah. One is probably a local in her own car. No reason to laugh when you're (laughs) when you're. Car is getting underwater like that. No, and I'm glad she's okay. Yeah, and she she does live in that area, and uh, so she was probably super embarrassed. I might have gone, you know, sometimes like when you fall and you're so embarrassed about it that you're like, oh goodness gracious, and you start crying and you're upset. Those times of embarrassment. I mean, I don't like it when somebody is looking my direction, waving at me. I wave back, but it wasn't to me. They're waving too. That happened at church yesterday. No way. Yeah. What happened? Um, we visited a new church, and we were there, and this lady, she kind of caught my eye, I thought, and she put up her hand and sort of waved, and I was like, hey. Hi. Yeah. Uh-huh. And she, there, she was waving to a lady behind me. Yep. And then I was like, I'm a visitor, so I don't know. Or you go and you scratch your head. Rob and Liz. His morning crew. Okay, if you're going to a bridal shower, somebody's getting married, I have taken like a laundry basket and put laundry detergent and paper towels and toilet paper and things like this, kind of a starter kit for a new home, a new apartment. There's a guy that is trying to do a starter kit for a junk drawer, and he has some things that he has said need to be in a junk drawer. So he's doing a starter kit for some people he knows that are getting married. Like what? Twist ties. Which are a weird one. I was like, okay. He's got scissors on the list, batteries, because you always need double A and triple A, chip clips, and a ruler. I'm this like, is a, a starter ruler? kit for a junk drawer? Yes. Don't you just throw junk in it? I know. Well, but you need to have certain things, like in ours, like scotch tape. you got to have scotch tape in it. I always also think a glue gun, glue sticks, colored pencils. I thought a junk drawer, you just throw your junk in it. Well, you do. But it seems to accumulate them. But I don't think you start by throwing These junk sound mail like and stuff in there. Ne- necessities, like well, yeah. supplies you need. Well, sure. And that's a, a junk drawer is a catch all, but also the place if it's missing, if somebody needs something, check the junk drawer first. What does Scott put as a junk drawer? Uh, I've got batteries, a bunch of loose cables and cords that I have no idea what they go to. Right. Um, super glue. Need that all the time, usually. Uh, rubber bands. I'm trying to think some of the things you haven't mentioned, Liz. In in your junk drawer? Yeah. What's in your junk drawer? Junk. Like what? Everything. You just if if I don't have a place for it, I put it in the drawer. And that makes sense. If I want a screwdriver, I go to my toolbox. Oh, I was going to say it's not in your junk drawer, right? No, not at all. I do think we have maybe at least one screwdriver in the junk drawer. Usually, like a little tiny one that yeah. you might need. I've got a mini one yeah. that I keep in my junk drawer. Yeah, 
Um, also, maybe a phone charger that you do know this what it is, goes to. This is sounding like a tool drawer. No, because yeah. you've also got tape in it, um, a notepad, usually a couple of pens. This I is have, a junk drawer. That's listen, not junk. I have an extra checkbook in ours. I have a little like New Testament in ours. Not that it's junk, but it's just an extra little one that's in the kitchen. Okay. Um, oh my goodness, I'm trying to think what else. <laughs> There's so much ribbon. <laughs> lots of junk. It is. But lots it sounds of like junk. that she puts things in there that she uses. Well, yeah. And I am I the only one? I can't be the only one. I can't be. Well, I mean, obviously, Scott. Scott has rubber bands and batteries in his and in assortment of cables. That's right. I actually because you never know. You never, you never know. know when you're going to need one of those cables, yeah. and I know where it is when I need it. I have two junk drawers. Two? I do. I have that a much junk. I have a large one, but see, like you say, it is junk, but it's not junk because you use it. Rob and Liz, his morning crew. Now it's completely official, and this is a must-do, and I am not a fan, and I'm sorry I'm not a fan. But now every text, they say, this is etiquette, every text now and must have an emoji attached to it. Yes. Why? I mean, come on. That's just extra work. you got to find the right emoji. If you do the wrong emoji now, it says the wrong thing. Extra work? That's, yes, it's extra work. Listen. I was getting it wrong. Liz is like emoji queen. And if you don't do an emoji, she thinks you're mad. Sometimes when you say certain things, and I don't mean you specifically, but you in general, say certain things, I don't know. If you answer sure, if you answer with things like that, I'm like, or the, here's the one emoji. Don't ever give me the thumbs, thumbs up, please. She is not a fan. <laughs> I don't like it. She, I don't know what happened. The first time I ever sent that, she was like, you know, Wow. And um, I don't send it again unless I'm teasing. <laughs> right. And then, and you do that quite a bit. And a lot of um, your emojis tease me. Well, I have to now. So I like just send random stuff because I really don't care, number one, about the emoji thing. And then now I'm learning that you have to send the right emoji. So it just complicates things. Can we just live a simple life and just type something and let it be and don't? Take it personal. You can't. Please. I can't help it. I cannot help it because I, I'm i very flowery in the way that I send texts. She is. And, you know, I'll do ha-ha, which I know. Every time I type ha-ha, I'm like, I know they're so sick of that. But I need you to know context. I need you to know how I'm feeling. And so also adding an emoji. So I'm, I'm over the top uh -huh. extra. And emojis. Yeah. Oh, my. Yeah. And you should hear her. I don't know if you're like this or if anybody else in your <laughs> life is like this. But when it comes to Liz, when she reads a text that comes in, she puts some kind of attitude spin to it. So she either thinks the person is bad or the person is really happy. There's just no in between. I can't help it. It's just, it's my personality. And that, I think, is my self-confidence, too. So I think a lot of them are snarky or... So <laughs> Or not happy with me. It, it, she does. And I'm like, I'll read it differently. It's like, oh, okay. But but here's the thing. Now the emoji is a part of our lives, and we can't get away from it, and we have to use it. If Emily Post were still around, she would say etiquette. Who? Emily Post. I don't that know came who up that is. Etiquette, like charm and fashion. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> She's talking to me about etiquette? She's the queen of etiquette. So she would say, yes, please. Add an emoji. Pinky's up. Rob and Liz. His morning crew. You probably heard this act, which is like that college exam, entrance exam, right? Right. American college testing. They have changed things up a little bit. So they're not including a couple of things or making it mandatory, but math and reading and th is it the English? Yeah. That would be math, reading, and English. I thought reading would be English. Anyway, those are staples. They're going to be in it. But like science and writing and a couple of things are... Not mandatory Science. Anymore. You don't have to take, like, you can take this test and decide, I don't really want to take the science portion, and you get to opt out. Why can't that be math? Right? <laughs> Why, I mean, I get it. We need math. Well, you do like we need, need to do simple math, at least. True, but, you know, when it gets to algebra, can I just opt out of that? Yeah, really, Please? right? I have a feeling, uh, you went to college, right, Liz? 
Um, a little bit of college, yes. A little bit. So you yes. took this. I took the SAT. That's di- yeah, that is different than the act. Yeah, I didn't do that. Jake ACT. took the act, right? I did. How'd you do? Uh, yeah, we're going to move on. <laughs> oh. But well, how'd you get into college? I have uh, God Almighty. Yeah, right. Paved the way. Yeah. But I think you can take both. You can take the SAT and the So ACT. you can fail the ACT and still get into college? Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> then what's the purpose of the thing? I think it I think it does help you maybe get some scholarships or, you know, whatnot. Um and and I don't know, Jake, did you take the SAT as well? No. Really? Yeah. Yep. But okay, so he, I am a he, little he, he I did. think you can take either or or both, but I only took the S the uh, A C T. And did you get the whatnots? Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah, I guess it's not well, I think during the pandemic, they put away, they did away with those tests. I have no idea. Like, you don't have to take them, right? And uh, so, I feel, like that's, I feel like you're right. Yeah. And so, maybe that was part of it as well. Well, they did change it up a little bit. Yeah. So, I guess it makes it a little bit easier for some people. I don't know. Well, I know I, I just did not do well on my SAT back in the day. Rob and Liz, his morning crew. Hey, you've seen. Paw prints of, like, cats on your car. What about goats? It's Robin Liz in the morning, his radio. Yeah, there's this one family that came back. I think it was from a hike. And all of a sudden, there are goats standing on their car. They call it a stampede of goats. There's, like, a couple of them on their car. I don't know if you call it a stampede when there's only two or three. <laughs> right? But they're literally on top of the car. On, 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 on the very top of their car is one of those travel... Uh, cont- I don't know like what you call it. Like luggage container. Yeah. Or carrier. You yeah, know, the carrier that's, you know, black and you close it up and you put your luggage in it. One of them's on top of that. The other one is on the hood and the paw prints really do some damage. Well, yeah. I mean, a kitty cat, you know, they might scratch your car with their little nails or whatever. But a goat, I mean, they weigh a lot more. And I wonder if insurance covers that at all. And the thing about goats, the way that they're able to like climb up the side of a mountain or an SUV, their hooves almost act like a suction cup, the way that they're made, and so it gives them more, I guess, grippability. I never to... thought of hooves being like suction cups. No, I had just read that at one point. Really? And, yeah. That's and, wild. So I guess that's how they get up and down the mountains all the time. That they're suction cups. Yeah. On their hooves. Yeah. Rob and Liz, his morning crew. Who needs a cow when you can make butter out of CO2? Ugh. I, I don't know. It's it's super weird to me. Like, we have margarine, but it uses, I guess, some cow's milk, and so you can't have it. But it's got a lot of oil in it. True, I guess. But if you are dairy-free, if you're lactose intolerant, this is something that should make you excited, I would think, because it could be butter. But isn't there already lactose-free butter? I'm sure there is, but this is just another way to make it. Another and they're way. just like raving over they can make butter out of CO2 with those, I don't know, those containers or whatnot. But they're they're actually doing it, and uh, they're very proud of it. Well, and Bill Gates is behind it. And when you got Bill Gates investing in your product, I think you might end up, you know, being a success. It might. At <laughs> I don't least know, not after what it. happened with the airlines. Oh, well, that's true. <laughs> 